pauna-unahang device guys ng Xiaomi na nagkaroon ng 120Hz. It's Sony IMX686 sensor. Hey guys, it's your tag girl Mary and welcome back to my channel. I'm back again guys with another unboxing and review video and this time Ang dami kong gustong sabihin sa device na to kasi sobrang hype na hype to pero anyway, I'll just reserve yung mga gusto kong sabihin and the truth about this device later on. So for today's video, we will be unboxing and reviewing the Redmi K30. Again, to those who are asking, I bought it from Shondi Philippines and yung warrant na meron ako guys, this one is the 8GB of RAM with 128GB of internal storage. Bago tayo mag-proceed guys sa unboxing and review, gusto ko lang pang ipaalala sa inyo that we still have an ongoing giveaway for the iPhone 10. iPhone 10. Kunin ko lang. Wait lang. Baka sabihin nyo scam to. This is the iPhone 10 and still guys, may giveaway pa rin tayo. Don't forget to join. And for the Huawei Y6S giveaway, kung napapanood nyo na to ngayon, I already announced the winner on my IG account. Anyway, on this video guys, sasagutin natin yung question if may upgrade nga ba talaga from the Redmi K20 tong Redmi K30 or kung totoo nga ba yung sinasabi ng iba na scam nga lang at hindi siya upgrade kung di downgrade. Pero first of all, ano nga ba yung mga specs nito na sobrang nagpa-hype sa kanya at usap-usapan siya ngayon sa tech world or tech industry. Unang-una, ito yung kauna-unahang device guys ng Xiaomi na nagkaroon ng 120Hz. Pangalawa, yung ginamit na sensor sa kanya sa camera is Sony IMX686 sensor. And lastly, of course, big battery and fast charger. So, anyway, Bago ang lahat, bago tayo mag-proceed sa review ko, i-unbox muna natin itong Redmi K30. So guys, ganito yung itsura ng box ng Redmi K30. Yung pinaka-pangalan na Redmi K30, may pa-rainbow effect siya. Ayan guys, ba Napakaganda. Maganda yung box niya, simple lang. Pero dahil doon sa rainbow effect ng pangalan niya, naging nagmukhang mamahalan yung device. Kahit na alam niyo yun, always yan. Pag Xiaomi... They give us the best, almost the best specs sa mulang, mulang. <laughs> sa mulang halaga lang. So, upon opening the device, of course, may panibago na naman tayong box. Sa loob, guys, meron tayong yung ating SIM ejector tool or yung mahiwagi nating panundot. And of course, meron tayong libreng jelly case and paperworks. And syempre, guys, the phone itself. Ayan siya, napakaganda. Pero bago yung lahat, tignan muna natin yung mga kasama. As you can see guys, napakalaki yung power brick natin. Bakit? 27 watt fast charger to guys. And of course, kailangan to since big battery yung meron si Redmi K20. Sa mga nagtatanong pala guys, mabilisan lang bakit Mary, lagi kang nagsasabi na sana USB-C. Kasi guys, mas faster yung file transfer kapag USB-C yung gamit and also mas mabilis rin mag-charge kapag USB-C. And universal kasi siya guys. Halos lahat ng devices ngayon, USB-C na yung gamit. Halimbawa na lang, kung lahat ng devices mo like iPad Pro, MacBook Pro, siyempre hihilingin mo na yung main device mo na smartphone mo ay USB-C din. This is how the Redmi K30 looks like guys. For a closer look, ayan, yung ating camera module. Kung mapapansin nyo, may kahawig siya, may kamukha siya. Yes, hindi po kayo nagkakamali. Medyo hawig niya yung Huawei Mate 30 Pro. Bakit? Bilog din kasi case yung camera module. Pero, with the Redmi K30, same pa rin na pahaba yung pinaka cameras niya. Pero yung pinaka house niya, circle or round yung ginamit sa kanya. And we all know naman guys na kapag Xiaomi device, may mga inspiration talaga silang pinagkukuha na like halimbawa na lang Huawei, Samsung, yung double hole punch na meron to kamukhang kamukha lang sa Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And guys, unang-una ko agad napansin sa device na to, nung unang ko siyang nahawakan, it is slightly bigger than your usual Xiaomi phones. Medyo malaki tong device na to, which makes it better siguro since syempre mas malaki yung display niya, mas masarap manood. But sadly speaking, hindi AMOLED yung ginamit sa display niya. It has 6.67 inches Full HD+. Plus. IPS HDR10 display with 120Hz. And 2400 by 1080 pixels resolution naman yung meron siya. So obviously guys, from the Redmi K20 na AMOLED yung ginamit, Redmi K30 IPS LCD display na lang yung ginamit sa kanya. That's why wala na rin tayong in-display fingerprint sensor. 
Plus, wala rin tayong motorized pop-up camera kasi right now, guys, because this time, guys, punch hole yung meron tayo. And to actually unlock the device, of course, meron tayong face unlock. Mas mabilis, of course, yung face unlock natin kasi wala nga tayong motorized pop-up camera, wala tayong delay. Pero, for the fingerprint sensor, nasa gilid na siya. Well, of course, medyo mas convenient din siya gamitin since always, doon nga nag-rest yung thumb natin. Pero guys, take note lang, hindi siya ganun kabilis. Medyo may delay siya ng konti. But still, pwede na rin. And bago ko makalimutan, guys, ang Redmi K30, it comes with two models. We have the 4G and the 5G. And obviously, yung meron ako is the 4G model. But if you will ask me, Mary, kamusta yung kapag hawak mo yung device? Madulas ba siya? Yes, guys, medyo slippery itong device na to at madalas siyang malaglag sa akin. So, ingat na lang kayo doon. I suggest lagyan nyo ng case para extra, alam nyo na, careful. At isa pa, guys, wala siyang nakasamang screen protector sa kanya. So, ingat-ingat. But anyway, meron naman siyang Corning Gorilla Glass 5. Unahin natin pag-usapan, guys, yung dual front-facing camera niya. Noong una, natuwa ako nung nalaman ko doon sa mga leaks na dual front-facing camera yung meron si Redmi K30. Pero nung nalaman ko na kung ano yung secondary camera, medyo na-disappoint ako kasi nag-expect ako ng ultra-wide, katulad ng meron si Vivo V17 Pro. We all know, guys, kung ganong kayos pa lang ultra-wide. At nung nalaman ko na depth sensor pala siya, <sighs> For the main camera, we have 20 megapixels. And for the secondary camera na depth sensor, we have 2 megapixels. Honestly speaking, guys, okay naman yung mga photos or selfies na kanalabasan nung ginamit ko yung sa Redmi K30. And for the quad camera setup at the back, meron tayong 64 megapixel Sony IMX686 sensor for the main camera, 8 megapixels for the ultra wide, 2 megapixels for the dedicated macro camera, and lastly, 2 megapixels for the depth sensor. We all know guys, kapag Xiaomi device, hindi camera dapat ang pinag-uusapan, kundi yung performance. Bakit? Kasi alam naman natin lahat guys, na kapag Xiaomi, they always gives us na murang halaga na smartphone lang Pero, the best yung performance. Yung main camera, Sony IMX686 sensor, definitely hindi niya ako binigo. Maganda yung kinalabasan ng photos. Tamang-tama o sakto lang yung kulay. Although, may mga times lang na overexposed. Ito minsan yung problema ko with Xiaomi. Pero, depende na lang to guys kung paano nyo gamitin yung camera. Pero, sa akin naman, hindi naman ako na-disappoint sa cameras niya. Of course, 64 megapixels yan. Meron siyang Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G. We all know guys na yung Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G okay naman siyang chipset for a mid-range device and optimized talaga siya for gaming. Lalong lalo na ngayon guys na it is paired with 120Hz so definitely mag-expect kayo na mas smooth yung gaming nyo. Next guys itong Redmi K30 meron siyang 4500mAh battery capacity with 27W fast charging. Well in terms of charging guys I'm very impressed with this device. Bakit? Very comparable siya with the OnePlus 70. 0 to 100% in just 68 minutes. Yun yung kinalabasan ng sa akin guys. Kung tatanungin nyo ako, mabilis na yun. And yes, impressed ako sa battery capacity na meron na itong device ito. Kulang ang isang araw bago ko siya maubos. Some things na kailangan nyo malaman, meron siyang MIUI 11 with Android 10. Yes guys, Android 10. Honestly guys, the switch from the AMOLED display to the IPS LCD display is quite disappointing. Viewing angles on this device, okay pa rin naman kahit hindi siya AMOLED and sobrang nipis lang ng mga bezels niya. But of course guys, AMOLED is AMOLED. Kapag naspoil na kayo ng AMOLED or Super AMOLED display, medyo mahirap nang bumalik sa IPS LCD display kasi medyo mas mahalata mo talaga yung difference nilang dalawa. Unang-una, ang dami nagsasabi, they would rather go for the Redmi K30. Etong etong hawa ko guys, bakit? Siyempre wala siyang moving objects. Mas mahaba yung buhay niya according to them kasi nga, syempre wala siyang motorized pop-up camera. And according to them then mas prone kasi sa burn-ins yung AMOLED display. So, mas maiksi na naman yung buhay. So, mas okay sa kanila yung IPS LCD display. But of course, knowing na yung predecessor niya, eh merong motorized pop-up camera, AMOLED display. At hindi rin naman natin mapagkakaila guys how great 120Hz is. Guys, yung sa Asus ROG Phone 2 na nire-review ko right now, sobrang nakaka-spoil tong device na to. Napakaganda. 
napakabilis. Pero nakakatuwa guys na nagkaroon tayo ng 120Hz and 4,500mAh battery capacity with 27W fast charging sa murang halaga lang. I got this device guys for like 14,000 or 14,500 pesos from Shondi Philippines. And the Asus ROG Phone 2 na meron ding 120Hz is around 50,000 pesos. Yun yung 1TB version yung meron ako. Hindi ko masabing downgrade siya at hindi ko rin masabing upgrade siya. Pero I just realized, alam niyo yun, masyado tayong demanding for a device. We want an AMOLED screen with Snapdragon 800 plus something sa halagang 15,000 pesos and below. So, ito na lang ang masasabi ko guys. If you are from the Redmi Key 20 or even from the Redmi Key 20 Pro, I don't really suggest that you upgrade to the Redmi k 30. Pero, if you never had those two phones at gusto nyo bumili ng Redmi K30, I don't see anything wrong with that. Pwede nyo bilhin itong device sa to. Lalong-lalo na kung hindi naman masyadong nagmamatter sa inyo yung display. Anyway, yun lang yung gusto kong sabihin sa device sa to. At the end of the day, it depends pa rin sa kung ano yung kailangan natin sa isang smartphone. Well guys, it's your tag girl Mary and see you on my next video. Bye guys!